Okay, do you have one of these? This is a rolling mill. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this. This is steel and a piece of copper. It's just a scrap piece of copper. This is comic book cardstock. You use it to put in the backers of comic books. Kind of a big comic book nerd, so I have a few of these laying around. I want to cover up the entire plate. And I'm going to run this through our bone mill. Okay, let's see what we got. Beautiful. Depending on how much effort you want to push it, put into it, it can go pretty deep because, uh, yeah, there's these are etched in there pretty good. So I see these online, maybe like 25, 30 bucks or something like that, and some of the patterns are pretty horrible. So I thought, hey, I know a little bit about science and stuff like that, so. How about I try to figure out how to make one? Today, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, it does entail um, quite a bit of things, but once you get a good workflow going, you can check out any of these no problem whatsoever. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how I did this in software too, but for right now, just know that I'm using an HP LaserJet 600. You can use any LaserJet. It's all about temperature, really, so don't worry about the type of printer. Um, one of the things that would be nice, though, is to be able to feed into the front and then out to the back. Okay. So you want a smooth path going all the way through the printer because you're going to be, uh, when you print this, you're going to print it first on a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to go through that here in a second. And once you have it on a piece of paper, I'll show you the next step. So let's jump into the software real quick. Okay, so this is the software side of this tutorial. I'll have, hop back into camera mode here but I just want to show you a couple things depending on what software you're going to be using for this. So I'm going to be using Adobe Illustrator because I have the power to kind of manipulate things but um, I want to show you what I can do here. So quite literally like in Photoshop I can make kind of just a bunch of blobs. Uh, copy that over to Illustrator image trace them and this is a really good mask so you want completely black and completely white so anything that you can find on the internet pretty much you can make into a stamp or a, a press for your uh, rolling mill okay and there's some options up here you can go in here and play around with threshold and change the shapes in, in different respects. So, For me, I want to be able to switch this black over to a rich black. No matter what software you're using, it would, I would highly suggest doing that. So in order to do it here in Illustrator, I expand it, I object ungroup it, I keep ungrouping it until I get to the black and then I come over here to black and choose a black swatch and I'm going to choose 60, 40, 40, 100 CMYK. So that is my rich black. In order to print this I 
I want to make sure it's down towards the bottom of my piece of paper. I want to be able to go paper feed to do manual into the front of any printer. Set your media card stock, so whatever the highest grams are. In this case, this can handle 220 grams, heavy card stock. Your best resolution. And usually under finishing on most printers, you have the ability to print out like the by from the bypass tray out to the back. So you don't want it to take a bunch of curves inside your printer. You want to print right from the front, right out the back. If you don't have that, um, you could try the method anyway. But so I'm just going to print this, and then I'm going to hop back into camera mode. Okay, so now you're going to need parchment paper. Wilson brand works really good, or Wilton, sorry, Wilton. Uh, any brand will work as long as it says the following. Our heavy silicone treated parchment paper can go up to 450 degrees. So rest assured that any paper that can reach 450 degrees is pretty much silicone treated. So you could try variations. Um, I haven't tried variations, it just worked the first time I bought parchment paper. So this is the brand I use. Now we're going to cut a square to fit over the top of this um, and leave about three quarters of an inch going all the way around. In this case I got like a little bit too much down here but that's okay. I'm just going to cut a square that's roughly maybe a half inch going all the way around because it's so close to the edge. So once you have it, um, just make sure that the beginning part of anything should have an opening because what will happen is if it feeds into the printer it will get caught and bind. You're going to be needing standard masking tape for this. So we're going to take that and we're going to tape this right to the piece of paper all the way around it. Okay, then we're just going to take this and put it back into our bypass tray. And we're going to do this twice. We're going to print it twice onto this using the same black, same everything in the software. Now, it will not be perfect as far as like lining up is concerned because when it feeds into the printer, it's gonna go either way. Uh, it'll be really close, however. We want enough toner buildup. Some printers, you don't have to print it twice, but in this case, this one, I have to print it twice. So I'm gonna go and print it and then print it again. Is it safe to run masking tape through your printer? haven't had an issue. I used to do this with circuit boards a lot, so yeah, I've been doing this for quite some time, to be honest with you. This is the first time I used this application as far as uh, making a plate is concerned for a rolling mill, but I've made plenty of circuit boards in my time. This is just utilizing my old skills in new ways. Okay, so once we have this, we can go over what equipment you're going to need for the next phase. So right now, this is my workflow. Okay. Hot plate. The hot plate, if you get a brand, make sure that you get a brand that has temperature control on it. And make sure that it can go you know, kind of low. So at the highest setting, I think this goes up to 425. We need it within the 100 to 120 degree range. So make sure you get a thermometer. For me, that's on low on this brand. This is Faberware. Nice wide area. 
You're also going to need another hot plate. This hot plate needs to go up to about 300 degrees. So there's two different phases here. One transfers the ink over to the metal. This one sets the ink onto the metal. This one I'm going to just turn on high. It's one of those standard coil ones. It's probably, you know, like one of those $15 hot plates. I did put a piece of steel on here because I use this for lamp work also. Anything flat will work, but make sure that you're watching it if it's not a thick piece of steel because it only takes a second. With this one, it gives me some time to kind of observe it, make sure that it's melting correctly, and then put it off and put it onto this fire brick. A fire brick can be a fire brick, it could be a regular brick, it could be anything that's not flammable. So you'll need hot plate one, which is about 120 degrees, hot plate two, which is about 200 degrees, somewhat 300, probably higher than that. It's on high, but because of the plate, it kind of slows it down a little bit. And then your regular plate or some kind of brick or something like that. You're also going to need a pair of tweezers. This tool is pretty invaluable. It's a sculpty tool. You might have one of these laying around if you're a DIY guy. It's used to... Sculpty is a clay that you can kind of forge around and make dinosaurs and stuff. So This is one of the tools for it. Very cool. And lastly, this. Okay. Now, I will supply a video at the bottom on how to make ugu from a, a different source other than me. It works all the same way. This is a piece of ugu, it's called. It's 50% silicone one, 50% cornstarch, and just a smidge of um, thinner, so paint thinner. Any way you make it doesn't really matter though. So whatever they make it in the video, it's very universal, you can't screw it up. And in order to make a very flat piece, you have to find a piece of plexiglass, make your ugu, put it on the plexiglass, let it dry, and now you have this. This is awesome. You'll be using it for all kinds of crafty stuff. Ugu is amazing. So this can, it doesn't, get hurt at very high temperatures so I can get this about 350 to 400 degrees and it won't hurt like I said right here on my heating pad it will never ever catch fire we're gonna be using this to transfer the image over to the metal so watch this entire video and then at one point go down below find out how to make ugu it's an essential key ingredient in any DIY person's life. Once you figure out how to make this stuff, you'll be using it for all kinds of crazy things. Okay, metal plates. You're gonna need a 16th inch metal plate. I would cut it to, you know, fit in your rolling mill. In this case, every rolling mill is different, so I'll let you kind of measure yours and figure out how you're gonna cut steel. This will work on copper also. 220 grit sandpaper, not one grit less, not one grit lower, not one grit higher. It has to be 220. Okay, so you roughen this up using both hands and get it to the point where when you sand it, you're sanding in circles, okay? Standing in circles, small circles. After you've roughened it up, it is time to chemically treat it using acetone. You must get every ounce of grime, grease, and everything off of it. So I'm going to take a few minutes to clean this thoroughly. But you can see the patterns of scratches. See how they're small circles? That's important. Okay, cool.
All right, so now I have to cut this to fit this. Okay, I don't care where I do it. In fact, I can probably get a couple plates out of this. All right, so what we do is heat the texture or heat the pad before it gets really hot. We must put this on. And we have time to position it because it's not hot yet. All right. Silicone. Make sure you wipe it off good on your shirt so it doesn't have any kind of weird grease and grime or any kind of like dirt. Place it over the top carefully. Okay, and massage. Meanwhile, find your tweezers and get those ready. So initially, try to get everything, but you're probably going to not get everything. Also, I found this metal spatula works really good too. So put. pressure over multiple areas. Cool. So we're going to remove this. And this is a really big one. So I'm going to make sure I burnish it in a couple areas here I see. And you'll see the difference sometimes. All right, so I'm going to start pulling this off and see what happens. Isn't that beautiful? Gosh, I love that. Okay, so now we're gonna take it and put it over on the other one in the next part here. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer this over to the other one using tweezers. For this stage, you're looking at the black. I'm gonna try to zoom in as best I can here. And it's gonna turn a rich black. If you're doing copper, all you do is have to wait till the copper turns a harvest gold and you're good to go. With steel, it's a little bit more difficult. You gotta watch it. And then you kind of look for smoke, just a little bit of smoke on the surface and then grab it and go ahead and put it over there. You don't wanna overcook it and you don't wanna undercook it. Another good indicator is I should be able to go in here and pretty much move it around with a little point, like a needle, and I could see the, the smoke coming off right now. So that's it, that's done. Do not breathe the smoke, it's not good for you. And I put it over here on my stone to let it cool. Nice. So that was the first stage of the workflow. And if you were to see that real time, that probably took about maybe 15, 20 minutes, depending if you have your thing cut already ahead. If not, it takes a little bit of time to cut this out using a plasma cutter and then sand it back. But other than that, it's a pretty fast workflow. Okay. So while that cools down, I will go get some other supplies that we need. And get ready for that part. 
Okay, you're gonna need packing tape. The thinnest, the better. And so thinner, the better. Cheaper, the better. So this is Tartan brand. Uh, reason for that is because you want it to kind of make a shape around the wire. Uh, the thicker stuff doesn't do that. Um, a piece of stranded copper wire. So this is about 12 inches and it has like maybe a two inch gap in it. This is coated, this is coated, this is pulled off. Again, this stuff is endlessly useful. So tape doesn't stick to it. And I'm just gonna put this down. And start taping the back off. I'll use several pieces, probably about three or four. And I will go over it quite a bit and cut that. Just work your way around the wire. It doesn't have to be completely tight. Uh, it, it helps, but... That's not good. Well, at least I know that the thing is secure because the tape didn't pull it off. That's good. All right, cool. So I'm gonna cut this off. And I'll kind of trim this off the video because this is probably boring to watch. And I'll meet you in the next half. All right, this is <laughs> the cesspool. So I'm gonna actually clean this out real quick to show you what this is. You can see that is filled with iron. Awesome, right? So it's ripped all the steel off the other plate I made and put it disposed in this liquid. So we're gonna etch that using salt. So let me clean this out and show you how to make one of these. Okay, so here's what we got. A thousand milliliter beaker with a piece of wire that goes all the way to the bottom and makes a loop. Uh, it doesn't really have to do that, but what you wanna do is pull the or the steel down, okay? So you want most of your wire to be down there. All right, so I have this on a magnetic stirrer. You do not have to have a magnetic stirrer for this, but I don't wanna sit here and stir salt into this. Okay, so we add salt. A lot of salt. And you usually add just a little bit at a time, but since this magnetic stirrer is so amazing, and I will plug this magnetic stirrer because it is not only amazing, but the customer service support for it is amazing also. So this is an Apera found on Amazon. So if you get a chance to purchase one of these, you will not be disappointed. They just keep making their product even better. Alright, so I'm going to let this stir. It should clear up, and then I'll probably add a little bit more salt, let it clear up, add a little bit more salt, let it clear up. How much salt? Until it stops clearing up. 
when you're using salt, make sure you're using kosher salt or non-ionized salt. No iodine in it, please. Cool. I'll meet you back here. Um, power supply, so I should talk about that while that stirs. That way I don't have to make a separate video. I'm using a uh, doctor meter and it has to be set to 1.5 volt. Doesn't matter the amp. So what I do is I crank the amps all the way up and turn it to 1.5 volt. Doctor meter, three amp power supply, found on Amazon. You can use anything else, but uh, yeah, this one's really, really nice because you could do electroforming with it. You could do etching with it. You can use it in a lot of different ways. Okay, so I'll meet you here in a minute. Okay, so here we have the beaker. I want to talk about texture for a second. So you see here, um, there's like these little pits right here. So on the very tail end of this, probably one hour into it, I turned up the power to about two volts, okay? I did that for a reason. I really want the texture, to be honest with you. So, like, it adds to the plate. One of these things about these plates that, you know, makes texture is they're always so perfect, and uh, they don't have a flavor to them at all. So that's, this rounded it up. You'll notice that everything here has almost a, like a, a sculpt-like feel to it. So this was in here for an hour, and then maybe for 30 minutes at the very end, I turned it up to two volts to get this type of look. All right, so what you wanna do is try to hang this so it's kind of like got an angle to it. Kind of like that. See how it's got like a angle? Now you're gonna hook your negative lead up to here and your positive lead up to this wire right here. Now these, look at my clips. I've been doing this and this is what happens to your clips if you're not careful so I'm gonna to have to replace these clips so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this dummy clip because these are leading to my power supply and I don't want to hurt them anymore so I'm just gonna hook this dummy clip up and you're gonna see an off gas appear on your wire so that's that's what's gonna happen right there it's like it's gonna sit in this stew Make sure it's all in the water. If you need to add more water, you can. For about an hour. I wouldn't constantly keep pulling it out and checking it. I would wait an hour to check it, okay? Uh, reason being is the masking solution, it, it, does, it does hold up really good for compared to what I've seen in uh, earlier experiments that I did. So this is the strongest on top of enamel. Enamel is the, the easiest one to do, and I did a video on how to do this with enamel, but this toner is probably second to the enamel, but it still does have flaws. So if you constantly keep pulling it out and checking it, it degrades it somehow. I don't know how it works, but I, if you just leave it alone, it works a lot better. So in an hour, check it. If you like it, if you don't like the texture, turn it up. But I wouldn't go past two volts because after that, it's just insane. You can also do this with a couple, a D battery and change out the D battery when you lose power. So you don't need the power supply if you don't want. But it is a lot faster this way. With the D battery, you're probably gonna end up doing it almost two or three hours probably to get that deep of an edge. All right, so we'll come back to this and look at it here in a little bit. All right, that is disgusting looking. 
but underneath all this, there's an etched plate. All right, so now I'm gonna turn that in two volts for an hour. Get some texture in there. All right, so there we go. You can see that at two volts, what'll happen is it'll start getting to the point where it loses the, the toner. So the toner can't hold that much amperage behind and just kind of peels off um, but only in spots so that's that's what I like about putting it up to two volts knowing that because if these are going to be like let's say a rock texture I wouldn't want the grout to be perfectly flat so if I had left it in there at 1.5 volt it would have just kept etching but um, the two volt will devastate some of the toner and you can see some of the toner that's still... So what it does, it gets behind the toner. Yeah, those look just like rocks. It's awesome. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to clean this up and uh, take it for a spin. Okay, so I have my sandwich here. I'm just going to choose an area that's kind of cool. And this is like a feeling thing, so... I don't want to say there's an art form to this, but yeah, there is. Holy crap, that looks awesome. Um, if it wasn't for all the stuff that was already on the piece. <laughs> Oops, I did the wrong side. But this side looks cool. So I had bits of um, engraving already on there, which might lend to something. Do one more piece for Prosperity. Oh, that's awesome. And then you could uh, chase represe the, um, the pieces the other way too. Wow, that did turn out really nice. Cool. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And now I have a plate that I can make, you know, a bunch of these if I wanted to. I don't know what I'll do with them. But um, I'm sure they'll come in handy with some kind of texture device. So I hope you enjoyed making textured plates for your rolling mill. Have a good one.